our special focus, our exclusive on NDTV tonight. But first, the sound of Mars for the first time. Let's listen to this. This has come from NASA's rover, Perseverance. Applicate, indicate, shoot, deploy. Heat shield set. Their first look at the surface. 30 meters per second, altitude of about 300 meters accordion, which means we are conducting the sky crane. Touchdown confirmed. Perseverance safely on the surface of Mars, ready to begin seeking the sands of past life. Absolutely amazing. This is NASA's biggest, most advanced rover on Mars. And joining me this evening on NDTV is Dr. Swati Mohan, the lead for this project. Uh, so Dr. Mohan, thanks so much. Uh, you, of course, we all saw you during that heart-wrenching, thrilling moments of perseverance as uh, the rover took off. And that's been described as seven minutes of terror. Dr. Mohan, relive for us those seven minutes. Thank you. So the seven minutes of terror refers to enter, descent, and landing, because it takes roughly seven minutes from the top of the atmosphere to reach the ground successfully. And in those seven minutes, the spacecraft has to go through numerous uh, configuration changes and high dynamic events mm -hmm. and in order to be able to reach the ground safely. And every single one of those events has to happen completely in sequence, on time, and exactly as planned. If any one thing goes wrong, then it would start a cascade and the whole thing would end in a very, very bad day. What makes it even more terrifying to those of us in mission control is because it takes over 11 minutes for the signal to get from Mars to Earth. So by the time we hear that we've hit the top of the atmosphere, that information is already 11 minutes old. So Perseverance is either on the ground in a you know nice, neat uh, rover configuration or a splattered, and there's nothing that we in Mission Control can do in those seven minutes to help it. So we tried to do our best to set it up mm -hmm. to succeed at the top of the atmosphere just before it gets there, and then everything else is perseverance on her own to execute entry, descent, and landing. So an 11-minute 11 11-minute de delay that must have seemed like a lifetime. But also, uh, Dr. Mohan, you know the fact that this actually happened at a time when the United States is uh, battling uh, the, its highest ever deaths of over 500,000 now in the midst of Corona pandemic. It really was a triumph in so many different ways, a feel-good moment, not just for the United States, but also for the world that we are actually pushing the boundaries, the frontiers of uh, science. Uh, how, how difficult was it working through the pandemic to have this happen? It was, I think I might still be in the surreal feeling <laughs> of it still needs to sink in that it's actually happened. Mm -hmm. We spent so much of our energy just focusing on just take the next step forward. What's the next step that you need to do? You know, keep your head down and, and do what you need to do to get the next step. The, the whole last year of trying to reinvent mm -hmm. how we do operations in the midst of a, a global pandemic when we can't be with each other and can't communicate right. through means and have to, to do things remotely and rely on you know, internet connections and people's home stations in order to do work has been difficult and in some sense isolating because we had grown used to working together as a as a team and being efficient um, to be able to I think there were a lot of emotions that last day in in the landing room because that was the first day that the team had actually been together in uh, since the pandemic began um, and even that was only half of what we had hoped would be able to be in that room. But before even that, we had kept it limited so that even for all of our simulations, our, our training runs that we had done for landing day, they were even less than what you saw in, on landing day, less than a quarter of that. So to be there finally on landing day with at least that team in person for the first time in over a year and then to have it go successfully was just 
uh, an enormous relief and uh, awe factor that we were able to to really cement our bonds as a team and work Absolutely. together to to persevere and get to this point you know, and have it succeed. Triumph for perseverance, in a sense, Dr. Mohan. But tell us a bit about your personal journey, because of course. Um, I mean, I think everyone in India was so proud to see you, an Indian American, uh, there in a sense, the lead of this project. You actually uh, left India when you're just one year, one year old. Tell us about your personal journey to where you are today. Um, my family emigrated from India when I was very young. I had a fairly traditional upbringing at home of Indian mm -hmm. cultures and and values. Uh, in terms of work, I was really inspired into space as a child and, and watching Star Trek and seeing those beautiful images that they had rendered of, of space. And that's how I, I became curious about it. I would read as a child these nonfiction books on what nebula were and what the Big Bang Theory was and planetary exploration. And it just kept growing from there. It wasn't until I was a junior and I took my first physics class that I started to understand what engineering really was about and that mm -hmm. there was a way to connect these two and not just have a job but actually to have a vocation that was filled with passion um, so i went to cornell university that actually has a history of working um, in space exploration and the mars program uh, specifically and right. From there, I tried to intern as many NASA centers as I could. I think I interned at four or five different NASA centers until I found um, the niche of what I wanted to do in guidance, navigation, and control. I was super lucky to be able to go to MIT in the Aero mm -hmm. Astro Department, the Space Systems Laboratory. A lot of the people that I met there in doing the research uh, actually are also with me at JPL. We have mm -hmm. a large contingent not just at JPL, but on the Perseverance rover mission herself. So being able to work with them all the way since grad school has really been a privilege and shows kind of how tight knit the, the community is in, in building uh, space exploration and planetary exploration in, in particular. Dr. Uh, Dr. Swati, in a sense, uh, you're a role model for so many young uh, girls around the world and of course Indian girls as well who want to get into space exploration but what's been also fantastic about the Indian space missions has been the high involvement of women scientists all those iconic photographs of women scientists really at the controls also at ISRO uh, here in uh, Bengaluru as well for many of our missions interestingly our, our ISRO our own Indian space missions are much much cheaper than any of the missions abroad even our Prime Minister said that uh, often Indian projects cost less than a Hollywood blockbuster to make. What's your perspective on that? And have you watched our Indian space missions? Uh, and what do you, what's your take on them? I watched a little bit. Um, and I have to say, I've uh, admired the, the Indian spirit and the tenacity in building these missions and pursuing them. They're wildly successful. I remember uh, watching the the Mars Orbiter mission reach Mars and do orbit insertion. It was a beautiful, seamless orbit insertion. It was just a, a thrill to watch. I, I'm really heartened that NASA and ISRO are partnering, mm -hmm. partnering more on missions, like with the NISAR mission, and I hope uh, that can continue in the future. Right, and Dr. Mohan, the focus, of course, as you said, uh, Cornell, MIT, where you've reached today in this absolutely uh, groundbreaking uh, mission uh, to Mars uh, rover Perseverance. But did you expect all the reaction that your bindi would get in the middle of all this? Uh, as some comments said that you really rocked the bindi. No, not at all. I mean, I've worn a bindi since I was a child. I wear it most of the days at JPL. So for me and actually for all of my colleagues at JPL, it was business as usual and, and how we were dressed. It was a little bit out of, <laughs> out of our wildest dreams to see that that was what was picked up <laughs> as part of the, the landing day show. Absolutely, absolutely. Dr. Swati Mohan, thanks so much uh, for joining me tonight on NDTV. It was great Thank to have you. you. It was great to have you on the show. Thank you.